Hey YouTube, how's it going? Yak Science here with another biology video. Today we're going to be looking at an example uh, of a problem involving pedigrees. I wanted to include a problem like this because they could be a little tricky when it comes to probability and different rules of probability and inheritance, as well as uh, skills for drawing pedigrees. We're going to encompass all that in this problem. Uh, so let's get started. The problem says PKU, or phenylketonuria, is a rare recessive disorder. And then it says that John, whose brother has the disease, marries Jane, whose aunt on her mom's side has the disease. If they have one child, the question is asking, what is the probability that the child will have PKU? In other words, what's the probability that the child will be affected? So the first thing to note is that it is a recessive disorder, meaning you need uh, both recessive alleles in order to express PKU. Uh, in other words, we're going to use big A and little a, uh, just for simplicity's sake. So big A meaning the dominant allele, don't have PKU, and if you have two little a's, then you do express PKU. Okay, let's start by drawing a pedigree. So let's do John and John's brother, who we know is affected. By the way, important to note, in questions like these, you'll want to check with your teacher, but in general, if it's not stated that someone is affected, you can assume that they are not affected. In this case, that means they could either be heterozygous or homozygous dominant, right? Both of those cases would involve uh, a lack of PKU. Okay, let's get started. So remember we use squares to represent males and circles to represent females. Here we're going to draw John and John's brother. We're gonna put John over here. I'm gonna write John. And then John's brother, we're going to shade in because we know that John's brother is affected. And you'll see why later, but for now, let's draw uh, their parents. That'll be important when it comes to solving the problem. For now, we're just setting up our pedigree chart. We know that John is married to Jane, okay? And Jane is also not affected, we can assume, because uh, it's not stated in the problem that she's affected. So here's Jane, married to John. I hope they're a happy couple. And now let's draw Jane's parents, right? So Jane would have um, a father and a mother. But now we also know that Jane's aunt on her mom's side is affected. So now let's draw a sister to her mother, i.e. her aunt. And we're going to fill that in because her aunt, Jane's aunt, is affected. And then finally, to top, to top off this pedigree, let's draw Jane's mom and Jane's aunt, uh, their parents. So it'll be one square and one circle. Sorry, it's a little messy. Um, and sorry, last but not least, John and Jane's kid, right? The heart of the problem. That's really what we're focusing on here. I'm going to draw a diamond with a question mark to signify that this is exactly what we're looking for. Okay, now the way I like to start these is by drawing out which genotypes we know for sure. Since it's a recessive disorder, we know that the people who are filled in must be uh, homozygous recessive. So we know that John's brother will be little a, little a, right? And we know similarly that Jane's aunt will be little a, little a. Now there's more we can infer from this, right? In order for two unaffected individuals to produce an affected child, they must both be carriers. So we know that John's parents must be heterozygous, right? Big A, little a, and big A, little a. Okay, so far so good. Um, what else can we infer, infer? Again, we have two unaffected parents, which we can assume they're unaffected because it's not stated in the problem. Producing an affected child, they too must be big A, little a, and big A, little a, right? Heterozygous. Those are the parents. So we're trying to look for the probability that this guy right here, or girl, um, will be little a, little a, right? Little a, little a, question mark. Now, we know that, again, the rule, for two unaffected parents to produce an affected child, they must both be carriers. So we need to find the probability that John will be heterozygous, the probability that Jane will be heterozygous, and then the probability that those two heterozygous will produce a homozygous recessive offspring. So we're going to do that using the product rule of probability, which states that when you have two independent events, the probability of event one and event two uh, happening is just the, the product of the two probabilities. Let's see what we mean by that. To write it out formally, we could say that 
the probability that this diamond right here is little a little a is equal to the probability that John is big a little a and I'm just going to write John big a little a times the probability that Jane is big a little a Jane big a little a and then all of that times one-fourth and why are we multiplying by one-fourth remember just because these two Jane, John and Jane are heterozygous, that does not necessarily make the child little a little a. There's um, a, pro a chance that he'll be little a little a, and that is one fourth, right? We could prove that real quick by doing a Punnett square, right? Crossing big A little a with big A little a. The chances of having the child little a little a are just one out of four, right? So now we have our formula down. Let's break this down piece by piece. What is the probability that John will be big A, little a? Okay, we know the genotypes of the parents, so that's just a simple Punnett square. Let's do that really quickly. Crossing a big A, little a with a big A, little a. So crossing two heterozygotes will produce a Punnett square that looks like this. So if we want to ask ourselves what's the probability that John will be heterozygous, we could look at this Punnett square, but be careful, okay? we know that John is not affected, so this little a, little a option is actually eliminated. So of the three options remaining, two of them involve heterozygotes, and therefore, the probability of John being a heterozygote is two thirds. Okay, I wrote two thirds over there. Now let's move on to the question of, what is the probability that Jane will be big A, little a? And that gets a little more complicated. So first, we must make an assumption, and that is that this individual right here is homozygous dominant. And the only reason we're able to make that assumption is because it's stated that PKU is a rare disorder. And typically, you want to check with your teacher, typically if it's stated that it's rare, you can assume that individuals like these are homozygous dominant, unless otherwise stated, right? This, doesn't, this individual doesn't have any parents to base a genotype off of, so we assume that the individual is um, homozygous dominant. Now, the question becomes, again, what is the probability that Jane is heterozygous? So for that, we have to look at the parents, these two. We already established that the father is homozygous dominant. We know that in order for Jane to be big A, little a, um, this parent must be big A, little a as well. Can't be little a, little a, because we're we can assume that she's not affected because it's not stated in the, in the question. So, what is the probability that Jane's parent is big A, little a? Well, the probability of that uh, you can get by doing this Punnett square, right? Big A, little a crossed with big A, little a, just like we did before, there'll be a two-thirds chance, right, of Jane's mother being heterozygous. She can't, because we eliminated the little a, little a option. Now, given that the mother is big A, little a, and the father is big A, big A, what's the probability that Jane will be uh, big A little a? The answer is one half, right? You could do that by doing another Punnett square, crossing big A big A with big A little a. The Punnett square would look like this, and we see that half of the outcomes, half of the outcomes are heterozygous, and so the probability of Jane being a heterozygote is one half or 0.5. All right, we're finally ready to, to, to solve this problem. So, we said that the probability of John being big A, little a is two thirds. We said that the probability of Jane being big A, little a depends on two independent events. And according to the product rule, we can multiply them together. So that's two thirds times one half. And finally, top it off with multiplying by one fourth, which is the probability that the, that the child would be little a, little a given that the two parents have heterozygous genotypes, and put that all together, simplify it, you get an answer of one over 18. This means that there's a one over 18 chance that the child has PKU. And so I know this was a really tricky problem. Please feel free to watch it multiple times. Um, it could take a little while to get, but I promise with enough practice, things like this will become second nature. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope this clarified pedigrees just a little bit.